Again, it's a time in which with ACC kickoff slash media days going on across the country, but ACC kickoff uh, to celebrate the conference and the beginning of another college football season commencing today and running through tomorrow. Uh, this has put a damper on the day and uh, saddens all of us. Anybody connected to college football, anybody connected to humanity, actually, that knows anything about the way Bobby Bowden has lived his life has to be saddened today. So just reading from the beginning of the ESPN article, just to get in the statement from the family here before we get the thoughts of everyone on the panel, uh, Hall of Fame college football coach Bobby Bowden diagnosed with a terminal medical condition. He and his family announced on Wednesday, uh, I've always tried to serve God's purpose for my life on and off the field, and I am prepared for what is to come. Bowden said in a statement released by Florida State, my wife Ann and our family have been Life's greatest blessing, I am at peace. Uh, the condition not disclosed, it's obviously none of our business, and uh, the family will deal with the situation, and Bobby Bowden has always conducted himself with humility and class, Jason. Um, yeah, it's... We talked a little bit about this last year, last May, when, uh, when Don Shula passed away down here. We mentioned how, you know, this is something that affects us in the Florida State family because, you know, at that time, Bobby was 90 years old. You knew it was going to happen someday. You just didn't want it to happen. Um, it makes it harder when you have the Bowden family making this announcement saying that the inevitable is going to happen. Um, I had the luxury to spend two years in Tallahassee working for one of the TV stations up there, had a chance to cover him on a weekly basis, literally interviewing him every Monday at, the, at this coach's luncheon, uh, interviewing him after games, home games, away games. Uh, we were at the ACC championship. We were at the Orange Bowl against Penn State. you know, And then being able to cover him down here for four years when I was in South Florida, I can truly say that – you know, and, and and biasly as a Florida State alum, he was he was the best to cover. He truly was a great human being on and off the field. I will say one thing about him is that no matter who you were, no matter you know what your belief system was, you know we we, we joke about it a lot. I'm the exact polar opposite of what Bobby Bowden is. You know, I, I'm I'm the liberal Jew. He's the conservative evangelical. Was always the most respectful. Would, was always just the most well, – there was one of his Monday events that fell on a, a Yom Kippur, which is the, holy, the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, and I was at it, was covering it. We, we didn't eat – I should, sorry, get a little choked up. Didn't eat because obviously you have to fast on Yom Kippur. He asked why, you know, why, why I wasn't eating that day. I explained, you know, it's Yom Kippur. He proceeded to know just as much about Yom Kippur as any rabbi I've ever met in my entire life. That's the, that's the kind of person he was. He – he, he knew everything about you. He may not have agreed with everything, but he would respect you, and he knew. He was a student of, of history. He was a student of, of, of just the common man. He, he was just somebody who – he was somebody who you, you always wanted to be your grandfather in a way. And I lost my, you know, my grandfathers when I was 11 and 13. He was somebody who, whether you're a Florida State student, whether you were a Florida State fan, whether you were alum, whatever you were associated with Florida State, he was he was he's a great human being. I still want to say he still is because he's still with us. You know, here's hoping that it, it's as long as possible. But at the same time, here's hoping that he truly does have a peaceful, a peaceful sunset. Uh, Logan, if you're good, uh, because of uh, possible yeah. technical and time. Yeah. Uh, conditions. Uh, we got yeah. the game James Coleman on the line. I hope, we hope, who always adds a great deal to the show, but especially considering the news of the day. James, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. you know, I'm driving. James, of course, we <laughs> want to hear from you. We appreciate you stopping by and thinking of us right now. It sounds like you're in the car. Uh, James is extremely busy, can't join us on a regular basis, but he knows he's always welcome uh, for this hour and any time on this channel. Uh, James, of course, we appreciate you stopping by, uh, your thoughts on this day. Um, you know, you know, it's coming. I mean, the man's 92 years old. He's not getting younger, but 
still catches you off guard. Um, you know, that's, you know, my father is a, is a complicated man. I don't know any of my grandfathers, but um, he's probably the most solid um, man that I've had in my life for for at least that, that period of four years when I played and even continuing. Um, every time I see him, it's like we haven't missed a beat. Um, you know, I get a chance. I've got a chance to interview him. Got a chance to talk to him, check up on him uh, after being a player, and you know his wit in the way and how sharp he is. It just it, it surprises you, it catches you off guard. But um, and I think especially toward the latter the last few years, um, and. I'm going to use him as an example of how we as a people probably should start thinking about things. And, and, um, so <laughs> Bobby was a man, Bobby's, Bobby is an old white man from Alabama. I only expect him to think one way. And, this, and I have no problem with that. But if I'm to erase because of, a, because of who he believes, um, and some of his decisions, what he meant for me for four years, because without him, I don't know I am what I am right now. Like, I don't know if I'm as polished. I don't know what it is. And granted, yes, um, he made millions off of young men like me. But we wouldn't play for him if he wasn't a genuinely good guy. If he wasn't a man that you wanted to image. If he, if he wasn't a man You wanted to emulate mm. I don't necessarily know My beliefs on religion Are different than most I don't know if there's a heaven or hell I don't really care But I know this man I know I believe what he says I believe he believes what he says and There's very few people that I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I know he believes what he said. That man be with the same woman the entire his entire life. He showed a commitment. It's, it, it was so, to not just to his university, but to to his coaching staff that even toward the end of the career that nobody would show to him. This man could have went to Alabama in a heartbeat. He could have went to other places. He could have went pro. But instead, he saw something in the city in Tallahassee that he wanted to develop, that he wanted to impart, and made it and, and created a blue blood. We ain't been playing for. We don't have what my friend called leather helmet money. We have. We were, we were a relatively new beast onto this college football landscape, and the success that we've had is is 100% attributed to him. There would be no Florida State without Bobby Bowden, and. You know, I, I, I just we're I, I know as men, as a guy who loves history, we're all flawed. We all have things that people might might disagree with. But I say this right here: it's too much bickering back up in the world off of little small nuances. When the totality of the person, the totality of the human, is so great that anybody can learn from it, and. And the way that guys who truly understood that play for him, it, it permeates through everything. Like, my son is eight, and he thinks he's going to play for Bobby. He thinks he's going to play for Bobby Bowden one day. And it's, like I said, it's um, it's sad because you know he's going to, you know the physical person is going to be gone, but that legacy is what the most important thing in the world um, is to any man. And that legacy is 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 what I would live like. I mean, I don't fault that man for any decision that he's ever made because everything he did was for what he felt was the best interest of the university, but the best interest for his family and those that he considered family. So I was blessed to play um to play for a legend and not everybody can um uh, not everybody can say that. So um that's my take on, on Bobby's death without trying to get too deep into it because I've been I've been I've purposely not commented on it all day because I, I don't want to cry. I don't like crying. 
Well, James, thank you for saving your comments for us. We appreciate that. I do actually want to ask Logan a question. I want to ask James as well, because both of you guys grew up in Tallahassee where you were, you know, you, you were around not just the success of Florida State on the field, but you also were around what Bobby Bowden meant off the field, what he meant to that community. And James, you so brilliantly touched on that. Logan, I want to go to you. You know, you you came to Florida State a little bit after James and I. Mm -hmm. Talk about what it was like growing up in Tallahassee around that Florida State program that had Bobby and, and what it was like growing up around Bobby Bowden and that program. Well, it was number one, my dad always wanted me to go to Bobby Bowden camp. So I'd be there every year while I was young. And that's something I think a lot of people now my age, even a little bit older, would say, you know, I got to got to take a picture with the goat with Bobby Bowden and spend time with him. And, you know, I'd actually go to a lot of the booster. My mom was heavy with a lot of the booster meetings. So I would be there next to him sitting on his lap while he was signing autographs for a couple of years. And, you know, looking back at it now, it's just crazy you know to, to think what a presence he's made here in this town i mean you know the the news today spreads so quickly and that just goes to show how much care there is for bobby bowden not only just coach but also the family uh, miss ann i mean everybody knows that family they know where they live and everybody's very respectful to that family and they care a lot and you know being a young guy you know, a young kid being able to go to these games and just knowing from my dad about, you know, how well Bobby Bowden represented himself, how he represented Florida State, how he represented Tallahassee um, was huge. And, you know, how, you know, you know, James is saying too, as a player to how he was representing that whole entire university and being for some of them, a lot of father figures uh, to them. And it's, it's, you know, the news today is, Nothing that you want to hear, and I've got I've got two pictures hanging above my uh, bed of me and Bobby Bowden. You know, it's just everybody. It seems like everybody's kind of got one of those because you know that that is the man, the myth, the legend that did this and, and built Florida State to what it is, and, and the program, and not even just the program, but overall as a university. You know, you think of FSU, you're instantly thinking about, about coach. So, James, when when the the day inevitably does come, and and you know, like I said earlier, hopefully it's it's as long as possible. Hopefully we get as much of Bobby as possible, but we want it to be peaceful. What what is his what is his legacy? We know about the wins, we know about the championships. What is his legacy to you? Um, to me is pretty simple. Um <laughs> he's a guy who who for the better part of life, led and molded young men to become leaders, um, fathers, um, uh, pillar businessmen, great ball players. I mean, I guess to use today's ter terms, he's basically a, he was a stimulus package for the hood. He took a lot of us out of our situ out of our situations and made us um into six figure six seven figure um men. Um, his his example and his lifestyle um, and his charitableness, his philanthropy, um, has you know influenced guys like me to go give a little bit of money, go try to do book bag drives, but to as big as Ward Dunn, um, giving um, homes to, um, to 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 the people who look like to the people who grew up similar to him. It's um you know, but but the the, the, the discipline and the rhetoric. And we've lost James as well. So we lost James. Hopefully he comes back. He's certainly welcome. And uh, we appreciate his words. Uh, they're very poignant. I, I appreciate the perspective of, of everyone here because each one of you has a certain slice of uh, Florida State football and athletics and the university that's unique. James, I think we got you. Okay. Yeah, man. Somebody called. I got to get ready for radio. But I just wanted to get on because I know this was – I know this is the, the hot button topic for for um, FSU right now, and you know the the good thing about your show compared to a lot of others, Mark, is that you know you 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 do a good job of finding some of the best that cover FSU, and one of the unique advantages we have is having a former player. So um, I wanted to make sure um, you know that was shared today, but um, but yeah, but like I said, it's just really just Bobby just giving 
giving hope and um hope, encouragement, and and an example uh, of of how to be. Um, you know, and believed what he believed, and he stood on what he believed. And I, um, I can appreciate, I can appreciate that. And I hope. And, and something that rung true to me when I was playing, I, I we had a talk, a conversation. I was um. I believe I was 20 about to turn. My birthday is um, is Monday, Monday coming up, and I um, I had this fear for whatever reason because I had a lot of friends die early or go to jail or do some things like that. And I wasn't making 21, and I shared that with Coach. And he told me, you know, I didn't think I would make it to 50 because his father. That's when his father father passed uh, when he was 50. It just the connection and just talking about you can't live in fear. You have a destiny. You don't know when your time is. You just gotta you just gotta live and run that race until it's over. Um, again, that's a guy who, as simple as I used to think some of his uh, mind was when it comes to football, I learned that that's what all geniuses do. Geniuses can break down to a level to a fourth grade level. Like they understand it so much and. But the biggest thing is they can relate it to anybody, and I think he can relate life, life, life lessons in football to anybody. So that would be his legacy. James, I know that you have done not just Coach Bowden proud, but Florida State proud. First of all, we, what I was going to say, I'm happy you came on the events you did in, in with the book bag giveaway. It's amazing work. You're doing great stuff, and we do sincerely appreciate you coming on and talking to us. We do sincerely. Right. Hopefully they slow down here a little bit. I'll be able to get back on more frequently. But yeah, I get back. Get some get Thanks some for thinking of us, James. Get the Wi-Fi text. Come on, man. Yes, definitely get better Wi-Fi. <laughs> Big game, James Coleman, making the time for us. That's uh, very gracious of him because, like he said, he did not want to talk about this. He has not talked about it today, but he made that concession for us. So that that speaks mm -hmm. volumes right there. There's... There's a lot of class right there. Speaking of Bobby Bowden, big game James Coleman, uh, and, and you know that that uh, mm has -hmm. is, is been influenced by Bobby Bowden, as James told us. So, Mark, Mark I do actually want to get your because we're all Florida State people here. You're more of a you know from Ohio, from the Midwest guy, but you grew up in the era when Florida State was starting to make a name for itself as a program, and you're also our, I would say, probably the more spiritual one out of the four of us who come on this show every single week. What does Bobby Bowden mean to you, both as a college football guy and as a, a, a man of God, I'd say? Jason, if all three of us, and then James included, would articulate everything that we mm -hmm. felt and thought about Bobby Bowden, I think we could do like four or five hours yeah. easy. Uh, so I'll try to be concise because, as you mentioned and articulated very eloquently, unfortunately, there's going to be a time fairly soon that we're going to be having this conversation again, and he's going to deserve it. So we will save, and I will save much of the football aspect of that mm -hmm. and trying to put his legacy um, into terms at, at that point. So I'll speak very little to the football. I do think, as, as Logan mentioned, I do think that there's a legitimate claim there to being the greatest of all time. Um, and, and again, I think that's a discussion we're going to have at a later date. Um, I think there's a legitimate argument in a day in which Nick Saban was at the podium at SEC Media Days, and he's routinely called that. I think Bobby Bowden also has a claim to that that's very legitimate. Um, you know, with some of the things that James was saying, you know what came to mind for me is Bobby Bowden always struck me as a guy that I, I can name a number of people, whether I know them personally or see them in the spotlight, that are jovial and outgoing and just seem like they just everything that they do and every day they're just embracing life. They just love life. They enjoy it. They get a, a big smile on their face, but most of those people live kind of selfishly. So they're enjoying life, but it's because it's give me, give me, give me. And I'm just kind of a glutton for life. Well, Bobby Bowden was able to do that and have that kind of attitude, but at the same time be a giving individual. So he got that joy out of giving to others. Look at this, what we just uh, heard out of uh, Big Game James. 
Uh, this happened 17, 18 years ago in which he received most of that input from Bobby Bowden. And it's still, he talks about it like he was coached by him last season. Mm. Uh, just the impact that that man had on people's lives. And like Logan said, uh, and I can just imagine like every, what, five to 15 year old and above mm. for years and years and years, man, just their dream was to stand next to Bobby Bowden and get their picture taken. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll say something. I'll interrupt you real quick. I apologize. I will say the one thing that showed me how much Bobby Bowden is loved is at my station, say, all the Florida Gator alums, all the University of Miami alums, all the fans of the other programs in the state, literally, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's that, it's that universal respect. He has that universal respect that everyone realizes I, I will agree with you. I'm going to say he's the greatest of all time. There's a number of coaches that we could talk about both yeah. at the collegiate and NFL level where when this time comes, we'll be able to go on and on about their records and championships. And the personal side will be either somewhat negative or it will be kind of neutral. Like we didn't really know that much about them. They were just more of a figure on the sideline that got the job done and won the games and won the championships. But with Bobby Bowden, that just infectious personality and that just jovial spirit just and and he, and he walked the walk you know he treated people i i have never heard a bad word about the man and uh, it was great to hear also jason from you in respect to having that interaction with him on a regular basis uh when you are working television in tallahassee plus we don't all have bobbleheads of other coaches but you have to have the body bound bobblehead mm. <laughs> It's in there with the bi helmet. We got the bobblehead in there. So, yeah. You have to. Yeah.